One last example for rational inequalities. Again, like we have before, we need to get everything on one side, right? So the easiest way to do this one is, of course, just to move the x to the left. Do you all agree with that? Is that, is that okay? <laughs> Let's just use it. Notice all I did was use the addition property of inequality. Just move terms from one side to the other. That's fine. But now I have to get a common denominator. Remember that x is over 1, so what's my common denominator? It's x minus 7. So, looks like we're having another one of those days, eh? So my x minus 7 is in the denominator. What's in your numerator? Oh, we got 8, and then distribute the net. This is a minus x, right? So minus distribute two. that. Plus 7x. Plus I'm glad you said that. I almost forgot the x. I get kind of lazy sometimes. Now, this is. I got to do something with that numerator, right? What can I do? I, I need to factor this out. First, let me rewrite this so that's negative x squared plus 7x plus 8 over x minus 7. Now, you know I'm going to have an issue with this negative, right? And you want to factor out the negative? <coughs> I think there's something else that might do better for us. Because that negative is going to get in our way later on. What do you think we should do? Multiply times a negative 1. Now, that means I'm going to multiply both sides times a negative. So what does that mean for me now? That means this inequality symbol is going to have to flip, right? And I know you may be thinking, why didn't you just take out the negative? Well, when it comes to the sign analysis, it, ends up, it just kind of gets in the way. So this is now greater than or equal to 0. And what are you going to do in that numerator? <coughs> How does it factor? Sure, I'm glad you guys are paying attention. And doesn't it affect the denominator, too? No, actually, no, it doesn't. You're, you're no, oh, number, number one, <laughs> number one, the guy making the video screwed up. <laughs> this is supposed to be a minus. Lo siento mucho. But the negative, if I, I'm just multiplying by negative one, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not doing negative one on top <coughs> and the bottom, because that would be negative one over negative one. And that's just positive one. That doesn't really help me out. I mean, I, I could have done that. Now, if I did negative 1 over negative 1, I would not have affected the side on the right. Okay. So it's basically like you have a negative 1 over a positive 1, so that's why that explains that. Right. Now let's factor this numerator. See, I knew, I knew something, wasn't gonna, something didn't seem right, because mm -hmm. with the plus 8, this guy doesn't factor. With the minus 8, what happens? Factors. How does it factor? x minus 8, x plus 1. Maybe later today I'll re-record this video. <laughs> Over x minus 7. So what are your critical values? Critical values are 8, negative 1, and 7. Do you all agree? How do we get those numbers? That's what makes the numerator equal to 0. And the 7 is what makes the denominator equal to 0. <coughs> All right, now let's look at our factors. So x minus 8, x plus 1, x minus 7. And then I have my whole expression down here. So how many intervals am I going to have? I'm going to have three intervals. <coughs> What's the order for these guys? Negative one, 
7, and 8. Please note that this is not to scale by any means. <coughs> what value would make x minus 8 equal to 0? Who's his gatekeeper? 8. What signs does he have on the left? They're all negative on the left, positive on the right, and remember that's because he has a positive coefficient here for the x. What about x plus 1? Who is his gatekeeper? Negative 1, so that's 0 there. It's a positive coefficient, so negative on one side, positive on the right. <coughs> what about x minus 7? Who is his gatekeeper? So he's 0 here at 7. Positive coefficient for x, so that means what on the left? Negative, negative and then positive on the right. <coughs> and you know, maybe we should do this. Any gatekeeper that came from the denominator is going to give us what here at the end? <coughs> it's going to be what? <coughs> it's going to be undefined. So who is my gatekeeper from the denominator? Seven. <coughs> so seven. So I'm going to go ahead and say this guy's undefined. <coughs> Negative, say again? Well, let's see. Where did negative 1 come from? Negative 1 and 8 came from those in the, deno in the numerator, right? So that means I'm going to have what at those values? I'm going to have 0 at those values. The rest of this is determining what your sign is going to be when you have all these factors together. When you have negative, negative, and negative all together, what is that? Negative. What about here? Negative, positive, negative. Positive, what about here? Negative, negative <coughs> factor with two positives is going to be negative, and on the right side, everything is positive, so everything's positive there. Now, look at your inequality that we have here at the end. I'm looking for those pieces that are greater than or equal to zero. So that means I'm looking for what? The positive, so that means right here and right here. So how do I translate this piece right here using interval notation? Bracket negative one, two, seven. Why, wait, why bracket negative one? Because it's included. I can be Equal equal to zero, so right. So bracket negative one to seven. Parentheses. Parentheses, and then I have another section, so I have to union that with what? And then bracket. Bracket 8 to infinity. to infinity and then parentheses. 